Hey, it's Susan Ragsdale with Wright Creations Group, and I am here today to respond to some requests of how in the heck do you work from home? So I obviously work from home. I do training and consulting and write books, but I am joined by two other folks that I will let introduce themselves who also work from home, and we're just going to tell you what we know, good, bad, and otherwise. Sharon, why don't you go first? Sure, I'm Sharon Williams and currently I'm working for the Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition of New York State and I have been working from home on and off for about 10 years now. So it is a wonderful experience. And Ed? And I am Ed May and I am a puppeteer and I've been a puppeteer for over 30-ish years now and of course I have to do a lot of that out where people can see what I'm doing but to get ready to do that it's a lot of work at home activities. All right so we've all been doing this and it's probably been 10-ish years or more for me as well so uh, just to kick things off I'm thinking back when I first started having an office at home one trick I did because I had to start with a trick was that when Pete was going out the door to go to the office, since I didn't have to go anywhere and drive, which meant I had more time, I was like, what do I do with this time? And so I would go out into the yard and walk laps for you know 10 minutes or so. And then as I was going back to the door to come into the house, it was like, I'm going to work now. So that was one of my tricks of making that lag time that I'm normally driving and going, what do I do with this extra time? I really don't want to start working at 7.30 in the morning. So that I'm kicking it off with that. So think back if you can. Let's start there. What were some of the tricks you did to, to help you transition from the workplace to being home workspace? I think one of the key things that I've done, Susan, over the years is designate a work location in the home. Um, it's much easier to say you're going to work, and I like the way you said that, we're going to work, um, if there's a place to go to. So work is not the bedroom, work is not the living room or the family room, um, those still have their special place. Um, and so work is that one corner of the dining room for me where I can access everything that I need, um, and then to sort of move through the day, because if you are stationed at one location, it makes it easy just to become very sedentary. I have my printer and my other equipment in my basement. So it forces me every now and then to move. So I'm trying to make sure that this working from home doesn't keep me just sitting. It forces me to get up and down a few times during the day. Yeah, and I did the same kind of thing as well. I have a designated space where this is sort of my quote unquote office. Um, where I do a lot of my work. And I have, a, like you, Susan, I have a sort of work time. I try to get it to work by a certain amount of time, like I would have a job when I have expected time to arrive. Something that's also helped me in a lot of what I've done is, have you heard of the Pomodoro technique? You ever heard of that? Do share. All right. It is a, a productivity technique where, um, and you can find apps, you can find timers online. I have an extension for my Chrome browser where I click on it and you work for 25 minutes, very focused, very specific on a task. After 25 minutes, a little alarm sounds and you get a five minute break. And then you start it again. You do another 25 minute work, you do five minute breaks. And after you do four of those, then you take a longer break of 15 minutes. And I find that has really helped me focus. And it's something you can do if you're a traditional office or you know working from home. But I find that really focuses my brain and I have that very intense burst of work for the 25 minutes, and then I have that small little break afterwards. And that really helps me maintain a, a rhythm and a flow throughout the rest of the day if I'm able to do that. So that's one of the things that I found that really helps me. So similar, uh, Ann Saylor that I write books with mm -hmm. would set the timer on her microwave for a set amount mm -hmm. of time, but that made her get up to go and turn off the microwave. So she was creating movement. In exactly. There. And she, yeah, had like to she, she had to suggest that to me because I can get so focused that timer could be going off and I would ignore it, you know? And so I had to mm -hmm. learn to adapt to that. What were you gonna well, say? I was gonna say the thing that I found is, it depends on the task I'm doing. Sometimes I can get so engrossed in a task that time has gone by and I haven't noticed the time has gone and it is good to get me up and get me moving around and get my brain working on something else. 
but I also find it extremely valuable in doing those things that I really don't want to do that I really am like, I've got to, you know, do this admin stuff or this office stuff, not the creative stuff that I want to be doing. And so I've got to respond to emails. I've got to create invoices. I've got to do update on the website. And so I can, you know, tell myself, okay, if I can do this for 25 minutes, then I can take a short little five minute break and be through. So I find that a great motivator to do the work. That's maybe not the most glamorous and sexy stuff, but you still need to do it. It's still got to happen. It's true. And I you can hear my phone going off in the background. <laughs> <laughs> well, be prepared for me to have a dog. Start oh, well, there we go. Um, that's always inevitable. Whenever I'm doing something that's live, the dog decides that's the time to chat. Well, one of the things, and I think you, you hit upon something that's critical for the working from home mentality, is the flexibility. Um, yes. I have to say to you that I look at my day as 24 hours, literally. Um, and then there are times where maybe I don't wake up and the first thing I do is work. Maybe I get up, I have coffee, I work out. Um, now that we're in this period of being home with our families, it might be making breakfast for my children and then it's working. Um, and then, you know, another break in the afternoon because life still has to go on, laundry has to get done, the same barking dog has to be walked. Um, and then I come back in and do work. And so it isn't unusual for me. And people may think, oh, you're a workaholic. I find myself sometimes at night, um, nine o'clock, busting out some work because that happens to be a really nice, quiet time in our house. And I can get a lot of work done. And then that means tomorrow morning, I don't have to get up as early because some of those tasks are done. So I think the working from home thing is about finding your rhythm. Um, and I know someone used that term when we were first talking, what is that rhythm? Um, and for some people, it may be more 25 on, five off or whatever, but to feel comfortable in finding what works for you, um, I think is what makes people successful working from home. Um, Cause I can almost envision people, including myself going, the timer is about to go off. And there's a certain amount of stress or reluctance. Um, so working from home, I think, helps people to focus in a different way. Um, and they have to find what works best for them. I'm sort oh, yeah. of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of gal. Um, as long as the work is done, in my mind, that's what's important. When it gets done, eh, not so important. <laughs> Now, I agree with you 100% on that. It's, it's more about the results than how many hours you put in or when you do it and things like that. I find that I, I have to have a structure. If I don't have a structure, it's very easy for me to spend a couple hours fooling around on Facebook or YouTube or just fooling around looking at something at the house or to, where did I put the, you know, and, and going through a, a rabbit hole of anything like that. So I have to sort of the night before, I usually try to plan out my week on Sunday and get a general idea of what do I want to do. And then the night before, try to plan out what's that day going to look like. Now, that being said, I agree 100%, Sharon. It has to be flexible because especially people now who are sort of being thrust into this work at home environment that they're not used to, you're going to have kids, you're going to have the barking dog, you're going to have people coming in, you're going to have phone ringing, you know, things like that. So something happens, you've got to deal with that thing. Um, but I need to have the structure to say, okay, today I'm going to write the script. Today I'm going to build the puppet. Today I'm going to, you know, and have an idea. Um, but then if something happens, you know, be flexible to be able to, to roll with it. And, and, and I also agree with what you said, find what works for you. A great structure, a specific time may not work for you, may not work that way, but it helps me a lot. Otherwise I would get nothing done. So one of the things that I want to point out from what you've both been saying is when you're finding that rhythm, uh, and I hear this actually from people who are working at home right now going, I feel guilty. I feel like, you know, I have to get the eight hours in or whatever. Mm. It's, a, it's a whole new ball game. And when I first started, someone had told me, it may take you four hours or five hours at home when it would take you eight hours at the office because mm -hmm. there are disruptions and phone calls and people stopping into the office and birthday parties and all of that. So giving yourself that permission and the grace to find the rhythm as long as you get your job done is mm. huge. Yeah. And because you don't have all those distractions and you're not walking as far other than to the basement for the printer or wherever you set it up, 
uh, making sure to build in all of those breaks to take care of your body because sitting like this on the computer for a long time is, is going to take its wear and toll. And so we need yes. to recover. And, you know, at the office, you recover by walks and chatting with other people. So, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. And I think working from home, you have to set those things up because like you say, at an office, you have the person that's going to drop by and says, Hey, what about that game? Or, Hey, there's a birthday party this afternoon for Susan or things like that. Um, you don't have that at home. Now at home, you do have, what are we having for lunch or, you know, the barking dog or so there is, there are those, those things that'll happen. So yeah, yeah. I think making those little breaks or, or having those little times in your day when you can get away is important. So talk to me a little more about for both of you, you have family and kiddos. I've got the barking dog and I've got my honey, but those are easy for me to navigate both of those. And by the way, I'm going to tell on Sharon, I will just do like Sharon does. If the dog barks, I'm going to, what? Somebody's dog barking? <laughs> Who is that? Whose, Whose dog, dog is barking? <laughs> tell your dog to stop. Uh, I've been doing that for years. She has. <laughs> always my dog. Right. It's always my dog. <laughs> so you're, but, you're putting off on somebody else's dog. I see. Absolutely. Yeah. But you guys have families, you have spouses, you have kids, you have grandkids who may be coming in and, and wanting to interrupt your work time. So my first thought would be, you do it like if you're at the office. When I do a training for supervisors, I may say something like, let them know when your best work is. Like, you know, my door's kind of closed eight to nine. After that, you can come interrupt me whenever. Like you find that best nine o'clock at night for you, Sharon, you know, where you find that spot, that suite that you try to protect, but home is a different ball game. And I see people struggling with that. So how are you handling having your spouses and perhaps kiddos and grandkids around? What's your tips? Interesting, you know, because I've always sort of worked from home um, and the kids have always been a part of it, whether it's their infancy when they were actually here <laughs> with me um, or as they've gotten older, it is really having clear discussions. Um, I'm on a call right now. Can you give me 15 minutes and then we can come back together? Um, in this period now of social distancing, we're doing their schoolwork while I'm working so that they're in a task, I'm in a task. and we don't interrupt each other unless it's an emergency, like something's on fire <laughs> um, or the dog really does need to go out right now. Um, so it's just setting up some clear sort of parameters um, and letting them know I am really always available, but if you give me 15 minutes to have this call, it would be great. Yeah, I, yeah setting up, nice. setting up your work time, I think is important. And and when you're in your space, like, you know, Sharon's saying her, she has her space and I kind of have my space as well. When you're in that space, I'm working. Um, so it's not a time just to do other things. It is when I'm working. One of the benefits to working out of the home also because, you know, the kids, the dog and things like that. I think, especially now, because people are kind of freaking out, like you say, I got to get everything done in eight hours and it's only taking me, I'm going to feel guilty. Also, you know, Reframe it a little bit. See the fact that it's a gift that you can be there with your spouse or your child or your dog. You know, in the middle of the day, you could sit down with your kid and play Legos or you and your spouse. Matter of fact, this morning, I probably should have been writing a script, but my wife and I went out and took a walk because it was nice and sunny. First time it's been sunny in a while here. So yeah, we went out and we had the opportunity to do that. And that's, that's kind of a cool thing that you have that flexibility. So I almost see that as a benefit and a gift of working at home. Now, that also means that later on this afternoon, I'll have to sort of rewire my brain and get ready to do more work. But you know, it's, it's, then I'll be in my space and then I'll tell everybody, look, I'm in my space. And everybody sort of realizes when I'm in this spot, I have a dedicated work time. So yeah, I think, I think having that dedicated space and the dedicated time together helps, but also see it, you know, like we've talked about before, flexibility. Sometimes the dog is on fire. Sometimes we do have to do, take care of the thing that's happening right this minute. Uh, but so you have that opportunity to do it, which you don't have maybe if you're at an officer away. So yeah, I think see, part of that, see that as, as, a, as a feature, as a bonus working at home. Truth and preach it. <laughs> <laughs> Testify. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say I think all the benefits outweigh uh, any hardships. It's just like you said, it has to can't be beat the commute. That's right. <laughs> you save so much best. more money, less carbon. 
mm-hmm. you know, you're, uh, you just have Lower to look good. Footprint. Maybe I'm not necessarily <laughs> they look good from the top up. Sharon, you're looking fabulous, of course. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I clean up nicely. <laughs> There's a reason I'm just from the neck up. No, I'm kidding. No, you know, actually, that's something that helps me and, and something that people, a lot of people talked about is like, I'm on a Zoom call. I can wear my sweatpants. You can, and, and a lot of people can do that. But I also find about talking about structure, I need to get up at a certain amount of time and I need to dress like I'm going to go to work. Now, I don't have to wear a suit for what I'm doing. And I wouldn't say that if you work at a bank and you normally wear a suit, yeah, you should wear a three-piece suit. But I think it does, it helps for me at least to get my mindset into the working mode if I dress for the day so you know I'm, I'm wearing khakis and a sweater you know because it's a little chilly today just get ready and you can't and some people can do great productivity just wearing the sweats and if you can do that great more power to you i found out that i can't if i wear my pajama pants all day i will be as productive as if i wore my pajama pants all day so well that's funny that you're that's saying, for me that you're saying that because oftentimes on my writing days in particular i do dress in a certain way like the shirt mm-hmm. I don't, you can't see it, but the shirt says breathe and the universe will take care of the rest. Well, that is a message I want to live and embody today. Uh And on writing days, I may, if I'm working on something around social justice issues and youth involvement, I've got a a D and D shirt that's 20 sides to every story, you know, and that fits perfectly with what I'm also working on, you know, so yeah. I might have t-shirts on my writing days that have the story I want to embody for the day. (laughs) And I think that's important. I mean, I can't always say that I'm not in my sweats. The lower half will definitely always be in sweats. The upper half may be in something a little more um, professional, but it is about your physical-ness and your presence. Like one of the things is if I am going to work from home, I cannot work on my couch because it starts to, you know, there's a lot of this, that happens. And not that you want to. I feel like the couch circles you and hugs you and next thing you know you're napping. Um, so it is sort of sitting up. It is sort of what you're wearing and making sure. But again, the flexibility of knowing, you know, somewhere around one o'clock, maybe I do put on the yoga pants and maybe I am on the ground and I'm working out or I'm walking or I'm something. Again, it's finding your rhythm. Um, And I learned this while working, and Susan can relate to this, I was working for a national organization that has um, affiliates across the country. So sometimes my meetings were at nine o'clock because it was 6 p.m. on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Um, So learning to adjust your day based upon when you work best or when you can talk to clients or when you can meet with other colleagues, it just means being completely flexible and in the moment and sometimes it is sort of turning it back on at 6 p.m even though you want to turn it off because that's when you can meet with someone but then 10 minutes later you know flip 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 off comes a nice shirt off comes the baggy shirt um the sweatpants and sneakers um it is really finding what works best for you and that's what i keep saying to everyone i'm like listen you can hear from a a billion different people. How do you work from home? How do you have it all? How do you balance? How do you do this? I don't think that any of us can tell anyone how to do it. They have to sort of figure it out on their own based upon what works for them and just to be gentle with themselves. If it didn't work on Monday, try it again on Tuesday. (laughs) If it doesn't work on Tuesday, try something different on Wednesday. That's the sort of gift of having seven days in a week is that we can sort of play around with this and figure out what works. I may take off on Friday, three-day weekend at the Williams Academy. That's what we're calling our homeschooling. We may have a three-day weekend, but I might find myself a little working on Saturday because I have some time. Um, And that makes up for me taking off on Friday. So just balancing what you wear, how you appear. I mean, I'm hoping that people are not coming to meetings in bandanas and curlers and face cream and things of that. It may get to that though. I feel like the longer we're at home, (laughs) the more the social graces may fall, but um, just forgive ourselves, you know, just be kind and the work will get done. You know, the sun will shine again. (laughs) Yeah. 
And I think that's the big thing is like, give yourself, like Susan was saying as well, give yourself some grace, give yourself a, give yourself a break. I mean, this is specifically so many people working from home right now. This is uncharted territory in many different ways. So, you know what? Give yourself a little bit of slang, give yourself some grace. Don't forget your self care, you know, <laughs> make sure you're, you're in a good position because if you're a mess, then you can't be there for the people that need you to be there. You can't do good work. And something that I found that I had to do is just experiment. You know, I, I've done everything from I'll get up at 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock and start, you know, I'll write for an hour before I do anything else. And I tried that. Didn't really work for me. And I tried, you know, other things. And, you know, there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing says you have to get it right the first time. There's something that says you do it and it works for a day or two. And then it just totally, the wheels fall off and you need to do something else. So experiment. You work great in the morning. Great. That's when you do your creative work. Great. Do your writing, whatever in the morning. You do it better after lunch great, do the admin stuff in the morning, you know, just whatever works best for you. And I agree with what you're saying, Sharon, nobody can tell you this is the way you should do it because everybody's got their own different circumstances, own personalities, the best way they like to work. So yeah, this is what I do. Try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, keep the parts that do serve you, jettison the rest or find something else, you know, just don't be afraid to try it. And if it doesn't work, give yourself some forgiveness and try something else. So to illustrate what you both have said, how you've like created your space. So, you know, when I set my office up, I had my room and I had my space and then realized that didn't work too well with the sun. So we had to change rooms and change the space. Over mm. time, though, I don't have to have that spot. I, I am here a lot at my dining room table, but I have found that I can actually, if I'm having a bad body day, physically not doing well, I can take that laptop and and lay propped up in bed and still knock stuff out. So I've learned over time, I don't have to be as scheduled in certain things. The only things I try to maintain is what you've already said, like the timer kind of thing. Make mm -hmm. sure you move mm -hmm. because our bodies just need to move. We can't mm -hmm. be sedentary that long. And so that self-care is making sure that, um, yeah, that you take, move your body, fuel it, mm -hmm. water, all that kind of stuff. And there was another one and it just left me that I was good. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, and the sandwich method that you were mentioning, Ed, about like do the admin stuff here, do it in a short amount of time to knock it out. I mm. sometimes, if I'm getting too lost in solitary tasks, I will deliberately set like, well, like setting this call up with you guys. I might set it up and go, I have until one o'clock to get this, this, and the, this done. And then I get to see people. Yay. And so some of so our are we your reward for doing your work? Is that what you're saying? You are, we are your, you are my reward to see you're welcome. You. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm just waiting for Sharon's dog to bark so that it'll be complete. <laughs> she is laying cute. obediently by my feet. I don't know Aww. what's going on, but that's <laughs> that's fine. Something's really weird. But, but, but for those, I think that's one of the tips I would give right now for those who are used to being around a lot of people setting up that time to mm -hmm. see other faces. It's so uh, uh, <laughs> There she goes. I feel better now. Yes, Thank you. Complete. UPS just drove by. <laughs> um, but setting up the time to see other people, it's not perfect. You're not getting to touch, but seeing each other is a heck of a lot better than just doing voice. And it's one of the yeah. benefits because there are so many tools right now to help us in our work from home. Oh, yeah. It's true. I mean, one of the things that we've done, my office traditionally has been, um, I'm a three man team, three person team. Um, and we sit basically in a pit together. So we're always physically together. Um, and after about the fourth day of this social distancing, I could hear in the voice of one of my staff members, just a certain level of stress. Um, and I said to them, you know, not to add anything else to an already crazy schedule, but why don't we do a standing check-in every day just to say, hey, what's going on? What you're doing? And so now, 2 p.m., although not today, because um, they're actually on a webinar, my staff, but 2 p.m. every day, we check in with one another. How are you feeling? What are you doing? What's going on? And then we end it with a little bit of dancing. Because we have always have music in our office and we're always moving around. And so we have a little dance party every day, two o'clock, shaking our groove thing, let each other see each other, um, and hopefully transmit that through the universe that we're still here with each other. And although we can't physically touch you, 
we can touch you. So that's important just to have that. I think every day it's made my day, it's made my staff's day, um, and we've remained, remained productive. Well, I want to start wrapping this up. Is there any final things that you want to share though? You know, I kind of feel like we should just dance our way off <laughs> from, from that thing. <laughs> any final <laughs> tips or things that you would say to encourage folks who are working from home that it's okay, you can do this. Yeah. Basically, just that it's okay. You can do this. You know, find what works for you. It'll get done. Don't stress. Give yourself some grace. Oh, and also, as a homeschool dad, our child was homeschooled his entire career. He never went to public school. Don't stress it too bad. If if your child, I'm just going to be honest, and the teachers may have an attack when I say this. If your child gets out of school and doesn't know what a gerund is, they're going to be okay. You know, so don't stress it too much. Take this. You know, the whole thing about a gift you know, have a chance to read to your kids, have your kids to read. No better education than having them read a book. Um, put them in situations now where they need to learn, like cooking with them. No better way to learn math and fractions than to learn how to cook, you know. So do things like that. That's education. Um, it's going to be interaction with you and your child. It's going to be great memories that you're going to have later on. And they're still being educated, even if they're not learning from a quote-unquote curriculum. So it's all I good. Think, I think that's the segue that we should all jump back on and do homeschooling because you're both doing it. And uh -huh. you, Ed, are also teaching English as a second language I am. via computer. So I think we have a lot of tips that we could do. So if you guys are willing, we'll do a second segment. I'll twist sure. your arm. Sharon, any cool. final tips for working from home from your side? Anything you want to impart? Um, I just can't stress enough. Be gentle with yourself. The work will get done and if it's not done today there's tomorrow and the next day hopefully and so on and so on and so just finding this time to be and if it's being with your family or it is that self-care or even teaching your kids about self-care um, that they need a chance to just decompress from what they're doing um, like I said, I had great plans for the Williams Academy. And by day two, I was like, think out the window. We're just going to have fun with this, right? We're just going to have fun with this. Um, that's it. It's the only way that I think that we're going to be able to manage the stress. And I'm a fairly stress-free kind of person. So when I hear the stress of other people, it makes me a little stressful. So I want people just to relax. Just relax. Take a day off. Nothing's going to happen. The world will be fine. The work will get done. That's the best advice I can say. So if you want to take off tomorrow, I'm giving everybody permission to take Thursday off. Just take it off. Um, done. I'm taking it off, as you said. Take it off. Done. Sharon said I could. It is. And then Friday, pick it back up and you'll be okay. Well, thank you, Ed and Sharon. It's great to have two of my friends. So we're going to end this segment for now, but I'm going to get them back on and we'll talk about homeschooling for 101 newbies. And I hear the <laughs> Williams house uh, headmistress is pretty tough to, uh, to get. I hear, that she, I hear that she likes to keep those kids on task. So thank you. We're going to end that for now. And uh, again, this is Susan Ragsdale with Wright Creations Group. If you have things you want us to talk about and explore, let us know.